ladies and gentlemen. That's stupid. You're better than what you think. And you know what the problem is? You do not see yourself. Do not see yourself. You compare yourself to another. Like you did when you were growing up with your sisters and brothers. You learned that from your parents. Remember your parents had their favorites? Don't blame your parents. Hey, Prince and Sinead O'Connor told you that nothing compares to you and you didn't pay attention. Prince and Sinead O'Connor, the late Prince, the late Sinead, both said nothing compares to you. And you don't realize your value. You don't realize your worth. I know some of you think you realize your value. And I know some of you think you realize your worth. But no, you don't. Most of the people I talk to lack confidence in their own selves. They think that they're not smart as everybody else. They keep comparing themselves to others, including me. Why? It doesn't make any sense to me. So look, we put up three songs. Three songs, that's why we're doing this. Nothing compares to you. And don't give up. I I, I like don't give up. Uh, you know, and then I like definitely go back in. Go back in is real simple. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you how I've been fighting one case for over 30 years. I, I don't know. I'm not continuously fighting. Please. I'm not continuously fighting that case. I'm just going back in whenever I feel like it. For my satisfaction. They wasted my time. I promise you, I'm going to get their attention. I'm going to go back in. I'm going to do exactly what that song says. What? What? You guys didn't know? Oh, if you lose a case, you just do a motion for reconsideration. And you go ahead and you challenge the court's jurisdiction and then you appeal because the court's going to deny your motion for reconsideration. Now you can appeal. Oh, you lost the right to appeal because you, you missed the 14-day window? No, 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 no. I just told you. Go back in for reconsideration. Bring up all of the points that you were trying to bring up before, all of the things that you were trying to say. Challenge the court's jurisdiction. Now you can appeal the denial of your reconsideration and you get to appeal each one of those points saying you had a right to be heard on those things. Ta-da! Now you start the case, the appeal process all over again. Oh, you didn't... Oh, these are the things, the tricks of the trade that you learn. A case is never over, ladies and gentlemen. What you don't know is a court does not have the right to demure your case. There is nothing in law that gives the court the right to summarily dismiss your case. There's nothing in law that allows them to do a summary judgment. You didn't know? Oh, let me let me show you, because some of y'all, yeah, I know some of y'all just don't know. Wake up. Wake up. The Seventh Amendment to the United States Constitution. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, uh-oh, I did it wrong. I clicked on the wrong thing. We're just going to type in the Seventh Amendment. I apologize, y'all, ladies and gentlemen. We don't want to know what it protects. Y'all don't get to tell us what the, the, oh, Ronald Reagan Presidential Library. Why would I go to Ronald Reagan? He was an actor. What He was president. When was he president? 1980 to 1989. No, he wasn't. That was, oh, that was that actor playing president. My bad. I want y'all to pay attention to the Seventh Amendment. In suits at common law, where the value of the controversy shall exceed $20, the right to a trial by jury shall be preserved, and no fact tried by a jury shall be otherwise re-examined in any court. You see, the courts never had control. They were never the sovereign. Well, we have three branches of government. Who said that? Where did we get that junk? The Constitution doesn't list three branches of government. Go back and look at the Bill of Rights. Bill of Rights says that 
this is the first time you see the word court in Bill of Rights. Go back, take a look. They need a controversy. People say, well, this is uh, just civil because there was no difference between civil and criminal when the Constitution was put together. Go back and take a look. They were both in the same court. And today they're both in the same court, <laughs> okay? So when criminal were combined. Okay, now pay attention. In any court of the United States, then according to the rules of common law. What were the rules of common law? Those were the rules of common law. Can common law change? Common law can change, everyone. Common law can change, but it's not the law of the court. <laughs> no, that's the court's common law. That's different than the state or national common law. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Pay attention. In any court of the United States, then according to the rules of common law. See, common law applied to all courts in the United States. So the Supreme Court was right in Erie. There is no national common law. Pay attention. I mean, there, there is no um, federal common law. Sorry, they used the word federal. Pay attention. They said federal. Federal is its own legal term, but there is a national common law. What is the national common law that the local rules of the state, which is what Erie said, pay attention, Erie did say this, the local rules of the state take precedent. Erie did say that, but nobody is reading Erie. They're all reading it and interpreting it however they want. Supreme Court did say that the rules of common law were the rules of the state, the jurisdiction where the matter was being heard, not the federal jurisdiction, but the jurisdiction of the state. Common law still exists, and you can receive common law in the federal courts. Go back and read the law, people. The law does say that if you bring a court case in a state with a federal court, you can do it under the Constitution for your state and the rules and regulations of your state and the statutory provisions of your state. You have that right. Common law hasn't been taken away. It's just that when you go into court, they want to argue. So, ladies and gentlemen, they don't have the right to summarily dismiss your complaint. All you have to do is tell them, oh, no, there is a controversy. They are saying something contrary to what I'm saying. So I have the right to have this matter resolved. That's how you get rid of any individual talking about they're going to summarily dismiss your complaint. Highlight the fact there's a controversy and let the court know it has no jurisdiction to dismiss a matter summarily when there is clearly a controversy. Court doesn't have that right. And they cannot say your complaint is frivolous. I've already had too many judges using that phrase, frivolous. There is nothing in law talking about frivolous. As long as there's a controversy, the court must sit. And you have a right to a jury trial in all proceedings where there is a controversy of greater than $20. That right is preserved. The courts don't get to sit up there and open that preservative canister and just let all the fumatives come on in there and all the festering and all. No, they don't get to do that. Some of you don't have no clue as to what I'm talking about, and that's okay. Here's the point, ladies and gentlemen. Others do because they've been in court. They've had their cases summarily dismissed. All you have to do is go back in and ask for reconsideration and then appeal the fact that the court couldn't dismiss your case on a summary judgment because there was a controversy. And as long as there's a controversy, the controversy must be settled if you bring forth a petition for redress, and that's what you did. Okay, you just have to understand, people. You are smarter than you think. It's just there are certain things you don't know about. Being smart and being ignorant are not the same thing. You can be ignorant and be the most intelligent person on the planet. You can be ignorant and be a genius. Anybody know about that Hawkins guy that died? The idiot sitting in the wheelchair? Yeah, he was an idiot, but he was intelligent. So you can be an idiot, you can be intelligent at the exact same time. You can be smart, and you can be ignorant at the same time. 
These are terminologies. They're separate words. They don't mean the same thing. You're being smart. You don't give yourself credit for. You know what you know. You know that you know more about certain things than other people around you. You know better than I do that you know more about this particular thing than anybody else because this is what you know and nobody can challenge what you know. Ladies and gentlemen, I tell y'all straight up, law and scripture, those are the things that I know. Now, I, I, I'm not an expert at scripture, trust me, but I study and I learn more and more and more. Let, let, me, let me tell you, I, I'm gonna show this to y'all. Sorry, this was an article that I was reading, but we, we ain't gonna go there. We can go here. We can go to Hebrews. I, I know, I know. I don't care if y'all don't appreciate this. Some people do appreciate it. We can go to Hebrews. We can go to the 11th chapter. Now, Hebrews, the 11th chapter, is called the Book of Faith. Y'all y'all didn't know we ain't gonna talk about faith. Well, technically, we're gonna talk about faith, okay? By faith, Abel offered to God a sacrifice of greater worth than that of Cain. And through that faith, he received the witness that he was righteous. For God approved his gift, and although he died, he still speaks through his faith. Did y'all see that? Abel never uttered a word. There is not one single scripture in the Bible that utters any comment about Abel ever speaking. We only hear Cain. What Cain said, we never hear a word of what Abel said. So how is it possible that Abel speaks? Well, remember, he offered to God a gift of greater value than that of Cain. Cain sacrificed Vegema tables. Ladies and gentlemen, I always, when I was a kid, when I heard this, how could God approve of Abel killing an, a, a sheep, a lamb, and sacrificing it and not appreciate the fact that Cain did not kill something? I couldn't understand it. I couldn't reconcile that as a child. I didn't get it. Give me a pause for a second, then I'm going to explain. Stop listening. Sorry, I had to find it. It says, woe to you. Now, this is taken from the book of Matthew. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, the book of Luke. Sorry, I was going to go to Matthew, but I decided to click on Luke. It says, woe to you. Woe to who? The scribes and the Pharisees. Because you built the tombs of the prophets, but your forefathers killed them. Certainly, you are witnesses of the deeds of your forefathers because they built the tombs and they knew their forefathers killed the prophets, but they are sitting up here making sure the tombs look good, but they killed, the forefathers killed them. So certainly you are witnesses of the deeds of your forefathers, and yet you approve of them. Why? Because they are polishing the tombs. For they killed the prophets. They talk about their forefathers. Our forefathers! Okay. But you are building their tombs. The fact that they built the tombs for the prophets wasn't that they were honoring the prophets. It's that they were honoring their forefathers who killed them. It's what Jesus is saying. That is why the wisdom of God has said, I will send prophets and apostles to them, and they will kill and persecute some of them so that the blood. I apologize for switching the screen. So that the blood of all the prophets spilled from the founding of the world may be charged against this generation. From the blood of Abel down to the blood of Zechariah, who was killed between the altar and the house. Yes, I tell you, I will charge against this generation, or it will be charged against this generation. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope some of you picked up on it. Here, Jesus speaks about all of the prophets, and he includes Abel. How was Abel a prophet and he ain't said one word in scripture? A conundrum, isn't it? Well, no, 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 no. See, Abel did something unique that hadn't been done before. I want y'all to pay attention to what Abel did. Y'all gonna love this. I, you, hey, you learn something new every day. 
learn something new every every day every day we can go to the fourth chapter of genesis because that's when we talk about abel that's when he's introduced into the world see adam and eve they had a child oh and his brother abel there you go his brother abel huh. now we got to go past right up in here it's where we find out about favor of abel and his offering but let's find out what Abel offered, y'all. Like I said, it's just the fourth chapter, just a little bit. We don't get to see much about Abel. But Abel brought some of the firstlings of his flock, including their fat, their fat, their fat. He gave a sacrifice. He built an altar and sacrificed to God. The first time it was ever done in history. Why did Abel do this? Why did Abel offer up a sacrifice in the first place? Okay, it says after some time, these were adults, these weren't children. Cain brought some of the fruits of the land as an offering to Jehovah. So Cain was the leader, he was the eldest, he was the leader, he brought the sacrifice first. But Abel, Abel was a smart person, he wasn't stupid. Remember, we talked about the difference between ignorance and intelligence and being smart, and that you're smarter than what you are. Well, Abel was smart. You know what Abel did? Abel realized that his mother and father had sinned against God and it needed to be atoned for or corrected. It needed to be redressed. That sin needed to be redressed. It was a wrong that needed to be corrected and there needed to be compensation. Where do you think the word redress comes from? Abel realized that. He realized that huh, Adam and Eve were perfect. There had to be compensation to replace what was lost because there were no other perfect people on the planet. So there would have to be a perfect life in exchange for the perfect life that was lost by Adam. Ah, a corresponding ransom or a corresponding sacrifice is what Paul says. So Abel knew this in advance. And so what did he do? He demonstrated that this would be necessary by offering the firstlings of his flock a uh, sacrifice and pouring the blood out on the ground. That's what Abel did. Abel prophesied that there would be a necessity for a life to be given, to be offered, thus the sacrificial lamb known as Christ Jesus. Go ahead. Take a look. At scripture and see if Jesus is not called the Lamb of God, if he's not called the Passover Lamb or the Passover sacrifice. That's why Abel still speaks. And he will speak and continue to speak, even though he died. What? I didn't say it. Paul said it. That's Jesus. We got to get here. By faith, Abel offered to God a sacrifice of greater worth than that of Cain. Why? Cain's sacrifice, although called a grain sacrifice or a technically communion sacrifice, says, and through that faith, he received the witness that he was righteous for God approved of his gift. Why? Because he, his gift was with forethought, foresight. And although he died, and he did die, he was killed, he still speaks through his faith. Why? Because he had faith that God would correct the wrong. Again, that was Abel. That's how he speaks. That's how we know about Abel. So when I say, when it comes to scripture, I have the ability as most Jehovah's Witnesses, to use the Bible to understand the Bible, not to interpret it. I didn't. You didn't see me interpreting nothing. I used the scriptures to explain the scriptures. Went from Genesis to Luke, including Matthew, all the way back to Hebrews. Why? Because that's the way the Bible was designed. So, ladies and gentlemen, you know what you know. You know, you may not be the person who is the most knowledgeable in what you know, but you know it. And you nobody can sit up there and challenge what you know because you know it to be fact. Stop letting people tell you you don't know what you're talking about. 
Stop letting people control what you know. You know what you know. That's all that counts is that you know it. Am I making sense? Okay, so the songs that you guys have all talk about a particular subject. Some of them talk about you going back into court. Some of them talk about you going back into a bankruptcy. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you one last thing, one last thing about bankruptcy. Bankruptcy has this thing known as in rem proceedings. People often go to bankruptcy and they lose. Well, they win the bankruptcy, but they lose their home because they now claim that it doesn't cover properties that have liens. So let's do this. We're going to go to the bankruptcy code. That is 1111. You, Uncle Sam's cabin. And then we're going to go to 541. Hey, there it is right there. 541. We can go to 541. Property of the estate. Ooh-wee. Let's go to property of the estate. Let's see if y'all can learn something today. You're going to learn that something. You're going to learn that something today. Hold on. The commencement of a case under these sections, these are the sections where they create an estate for you. So if your bankruptcy says the estate of blah, 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 then this section applies. Of this title creates an estate. Such estate is comprised of all of the following property, whether located or wherever located and by whomever held any property of the estate. Pay attention. Except as provided in this subsection, blah, 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 all of the legal and equitable interest in a debtor's property as of the commencement of the case. The debtor is the estate, but nobody pays attention. All of the interest, legal and equitable interests, as well as security interests. All of the interest in a debtor or the debtor's spouse in community property as of the commencement of the case, that is under sole or equal or joint management and control of the debtor. Ladies and gentlemen, all of the legal and equitable interest includes the fact that there is a lien on the property. When the bankruptcy is discharged, it includes all of the personal debt of the debtor, which includes the debtor's property. Don't you dare tell nobody because the bankruptcy court says that it doesn't include the property. Well, right here, it says it includes their interest, legal and equitable interest in the property. Well, look at the deed of trust and go look at that county record and see that the debtor is listed on the property. So that means the property is included in the discharge. Like I said, you are smarter than you think. Nobody can challenge what you know. This is the junk I know. Go back. You guys have been listening to me. Those of you who've been listening to me for greater than 12 years have never seen a judge or anyone else challenge anything I've said. Go. Go, go, go. Go. I dare you. If I do a motion for you, notice how they don't challenge any of the points I bring up because I only bring up facts. I don't bring up what I think. I don't interpret no stupid statute the way I feel like it. But the courts sit up here and give you guys a presumption that your property is not included as far as the personal liability. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that personal liability includes the legal and equitable interest in the property. Any liability associated with that, pay attention. Now, I want y'all liable for an allowable uh, allowable claim against the debtor and or for an allowable claim against the debtor and or allowable claim against the debtor's spouse to the extent that such interest is so liable. They say that it personally liable. All of the personal liabilities are discharged. Well, part of that personal liability includes property interests. So ching. Any and all, oh, I'm sorry, pay attention, all legal and equitable interests. So let's let's do this because we got to do the, the advocate of the devil. Watch this. Let's go to, we're going to go here. We're going to go to no I, no I, no I, no I. Do I know I, do I know I, do I know I. 
If no eye takes too long to come up, we're going to go to chat. Uh-oh, chat got to pull up too. I, I ain't had these things ready, y'all. I, I Because I didn't I, I didn't know. I, I didn't know I was going to do this. No eye comes up first. Nope, no eye didn't come up first. It's whoever beats us to the punch. Wake up. Does this also include personal interests in the property and or personal liability concerning the property? Question mark. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, I've never asked this question before. I, I never thought I had to. So let's do this. Let's see what he has to say. The text you provided appears to be the United States Bankruptcy Code. I didn't ask that. I asked inclusion of personal interest. Yes, this does include personal interest in property. Legal and equitable interest generally composes of all rights, titles, and interests that the debtor has in the property. Personal liability. The text also addresses the aspects of personal liability concerning the property, subsection blah, blah, blah. You mentioned likely deals with the conditions under which the debtor interest in the property is managed and controlled, as well as blah, blah, blah. Regarding the specific reference to other sections, blah, 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 these sections deal with various powers and recoveries by the trustee, including voidable transfers and improvements of the estate of non from non in state ISIS. That's why you go under section 552 showing that the property is exempt from liquidation. Okay. Let me see if I can explain something to y'all and I might as well give y'all this information because I said it in 2012. I told everybody and their grandmama that they should be filing bankruptcy under Chapter 11 because the all caps name is the sole proprietorship, is the business. Don't worry about it. Call it a sole proprietorship. I did this as a, this was a business arrangement. This was banking business. This is the EIN that was created specifically for that, your honor. And when I filed this bankruptcy, I went to the IRS, IRS website. Hold on now. Y'all hold on. It ain't going to let me get in there because it's Saturday. Hold on. I-R-S dot G-O-V. And we're going to go to IRS dot gov. Y'all just need to pay attention. Told y'all. You're going to learn something. You're going to learn it something today. We're going to click on here. Apply for an EIN number. And when we go here, we're going to go down to the blue box. And we're going to hit apply online. It's going to say, hey, we closed. You can't come on here right now. Get the on out of here. Well, here's what you do, y'all. When you when it's not closed, Monday through Friday, 7 to 7, when it's not closed, what you're going to do is you're going to click on it. And you're going to get a, when you're filing bankruptcy, a bankruptcy estate EIN. You're not going to file under your social security number. Why would you be that dumb and file under your social security number so they can bar you from filing bankruptcy? You're going to go in under the estate. Why? Because the property is property of the estate. Ain't that why the trustee comes in and makes it property of the estate? And go into Chapter 11. Chapter 11, they don't just come take your property. They don't have a right to take your property under Chapter 11. But you got to go into the root, go over the rules of Chapter 11. All the corporations go under Chapter 11. File under Chapter 11. It's a primary residence. Not subject to liquidation under Chapter 11. Shh, don't you dare tell nobody. There you go. I have a guy that came to me and told me he did this in 2015. I told him I had already told people about that in 2012. We were already doing that in 2012. I can't pull up any of the documents because they took those, those, those files from me and destroyed them. But nonetheless, the same thing I just told you now is the same thing I said back then. Been doing this for too long. 
He did some other things that I can't tell you about because that's his information. I can't tell you about that because that's his information, but I can tell you about what I did. Now, he had some, some success, but he didn't know what he was doing, and he didn't have nobody to go to back then, so he came to me. Now, I told him this. I said, I will help you for free. I said, but you're going to have to treat me like an attorney. You're going to have to be honest with me. You're going to have to give me the information so that I can go over it and tell you what you missed. He agreed. And he did not send me what I asked him. I asked him. I didn't care about the other documents he filed. I asked him for the bankruptcy documents. So that I go over there and tell him exactly why the judge said what the judge said. He didn't provide me a single bankruptcy document, even though he said he would. And so I told him, okay, fine. I won't help you. No, 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 I'll get those to you. I don't give up about what you're going to do now. I told you I didn't have time. I said I was helping you at no charge for free. And now you want to act like you have a trust issue? Well, F you. You came to me. I ain't got time for you. Bye-bye. Seriously, I don't have time. I don't need your information, people. I already have information. That's why you come to my videos. Sorry. Woosa, woosa. Sorry, the individual came to me because he didn't know what to do. And so I'm trying to help him. And the first thing he wants to do is withhold information. Look, the same as the intelligent creature who asked us for our help. And while we're trying to help him, he's doing something else in the background. He doesn't ask us, is this going to interfere? We have quite a few clients that says, look, I'm also doing this. Will this interfere with what you guys are doing? And we tell them, no, that will not interfere, especially if it, it depends on what it is that they're doing. Well, this guy received a letter back from the bank, which should have come to us. He won't let us handle our business. He decided he was going to handle it for us. Now, we have a limited power of attorney. He said there was no power of attorney. Now, uh, again, when he signed up, there was a power of attorney. The website, everything says exactly that the power of attorney is always limited with us, always limited. He asked us to stop. We stopped. Then he wants to get into an argument. I told him, stop emailing me. You asked us to stop. We're going to stop. Well, I detect a tone. I detect an attitude. You better believe you detect an attitude. You better believe you detect the tone. So when I did the video, I knew he would watch it. And I knew he would take offense. Even though I wasn't talking about him. Didn't mention his name. I mentioned a situation. And of course, he had to email me again. Now you tell me, ladies and gentlemen, who's in the right. I don't need to be wrong. I just know that somebody tells us, hey, I don't want y'all doing that. And we have a limited power of attorney. We are bound to obey that. Now, if they got a complaint or a gripe, there's an arbitration agreement associated. It's on every receipt. Now, here's the unique thing about the arbitration agreement, ladies and gentlemen. If we're in the wrong, we lose. It, it really is that simple. The arbitrator doesn't rule in our favor because the arbitrator is listed in the contract. The arbitrator has to be independent. They can't be on my side. I won't allow it. That's why we can't do any wrong. We have to help our clients. We have to help our clients. We have to do right by our clients. That's why there's an arbitration agreement, people. Lord have mercy. Well, anyway, now the person wants to accuse us of fraud. Excuse me, how did we defraud you? You got a letter from a bank. So obviously we're doing what we said we were going to do. You asked us to stop. Okay, we said we were going to stop. So why is the intelligent creature now saying somebody is defrauding them? Because, ladies and gentlemen, this is what people do. So, the rest of you who are not like that, go and take your power back. Stop giving your power away to these public servants. Why would you allow a public servant to be your king? Look, there was a time in Jerusalem when they were being besieged by Babylon, where it was prophesied 
that they would get one of the lowly servants in the king's palace, the lowly servants of the field, and ask them to be their ruler. Now, what you don't understand, why would you go to a five-year-old child and ask him to rule over you? I told you I have that experience. At the age of 13, adults came to me and asked me to be their leader of their gang. For the life of me, I couldn't understand that. I, my first response was, I'm a kid. That's my first response to them. Now, mind you, I understand. I was pretty, I was perceived as pretty intelligent. They called me Poindexter. So I was perceived as being, you know, somewhat of a genius when I was a child. So I understand. But I was still a kid. Ladies and gentlemen, why would you allow somebody who doesn't have the capacity, a public servant does not have the capacity of ruling as king? Why would you allow a public servant to rule over you? No, 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 no. I'm not talking to the ignorant people, those of you who want to argue with them. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to use the rules, policies, and procedures against them. Rules, policies, procedures against them. Police officers can only arrest if there is a crime. You all have got to start challenging this thing about police officers finding probable cause or reasonable suspicion. There is no such thing as reasonable suspicion in law. In statute, yes. You have to start challenging the statute as unconstitutional. You have to start challenging the statute as not being law. You have to speak up and stop giving up. I get so many people talking about, oh, I'm just so tired. I just want to give up. Don't you know that that's their system? That's the psychological game that they're playing? They want you to get tired. They want you to give up. I refuse to give up. I told you, 30 years. I'm letting them know that I ain't tired yet. I don't get tired, y'all. Y'all shouldn't get tired either. Seven days a week, I don't get tired, y'all. I get exhausted, but I don't get tired. So stop getting tired. Stop giving up. You're not doing yourself any good, and you're not doing anybody else any good. So I will say it again so that you understand. Don't give up. It's an anthem. Go back in. Fight that case. Don't, don't, don't let that case go away because you are better than you think. Three in a row, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and then we ain't even going to talk about to get back your note. <laughs> go get back your promissory note, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to say this. We're going to end it with this. When you have a promissory note, ladies and gentlemen, the promissory note belongs to you. Okay? The promissory note doesn't belong to the bank. You're letting them hold the promissory note. It's the IOU. Remember when they used to, hey, I learned it from Maverick. Y'all remember Maverick, the TV series? Yeah, the little, little old TV series called Maverick? Well, individuals used to gamble. They used to bet, they used to play cards, they used to play poker. And while they would be playing poker, somebody wouldn't have the money on them. And so they would write a guarantee or an IOU. And they would do it and they would sign it and they would give it to the other person to hold. That IOU stood as evidence of a debt. If the person didn't pay, they could go to court and say, hey, I have this IOU. Did you pay? No, your honor. Okay, well then we're going to take your property until we get this amount back for this man. Oh, please, your honor. Doesn't matter. You signed the IOU. Isn't that the same thing they do with your promissory notes? But if you pay, the individual holding the note with your signature had to return it to you. Why? Because he could five years later say you never paid. But you have proof that you paid. Ah, now he's committed fraud. That's why. This is a principle. Go get back your note. They foreclosed on your home 10 years ago. <laughs> They're still trading that note. Remember, the note must follow the mortgage. The mortgage must follow the note. They're still trading that mortgage on the market and making a profit off of it. Why? Because they pooled 
and bundled it with a bunch of other mortgages. So it's still trading. They're committing fraud, people. You don't accuse them of committing fraud. You say, I believe that these activities are tantamount to fraud. There you go. I believe. Okay. Like I said, I know what I know. That's why I know I'm better than I think. People think I think too much of myself. Ladies and gentlemen, Dominique, my friend, to this day, I still think Dominique, of Dominique as a friend. I haven't seen Dominique since 1994. At least I think 1994. Me, no, not even 1994. 1988 is the last time I saw Dominique. But Dominique would say, I'm not conceited, I'm convinced. And I looked at him and I realized he wasn't joking. He was telling the truth. And from that point on, ladies and gentlemen, who can challenge that? Nobody can challenge him. If that's what he believes about himself, who can come and take that away from him? Again, you are better than you think. You are going to have to start realizing how much better you are. Okay, now, hey, hey, don't give up. Almost six minutes long. Hey, that, but it's just the way it was, okay? That song, man. So, that, these songs right here, these folk, that's done for y'all. Ain't done for me. That's done for y'all. And it's a variety of tea, okay? But the words are for you. Have a good day, y'all. We'll see y'all the next time. Same bat time, same bat channel. I got documents I have to work on. Arriba Dirty.